I'm going to work through the mechanics question of the November 2019 NSC paper and the mechanics question is always going to be question 2 in paper 1 of the physical sciences exams. So question 2 reads as follows. Block P of mass 2 kilograms is connected to a block Q of mass 3 kilograms by a light inextensible string. Both blocks are on a plane inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Block Q is pulled up by a constant force of 40 newtons at an angle of 25 degrees to the incline. Block P moves on a rough section AB of the incline, while block Q moves on a frictionless section BC of the incline. See the diagram below. An average constant frictional force of 2.5 newtons acts on block P as it moves from A to B up the incline. Question 2.1. State Newton's second law in words. The correct statement for Newton's second law is as follows. When a net force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force with an acceleration that is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Question 2.2 states the following. Draw a labelled free body diagram for block P. And we can see that for block P, there is a tension force that is pulling it up the slope. Because it has a mass, we know that there is going to be a force of gravity that is pulling it downward, vertically downward. And they have told us that there is a frictional force that is acting on block P, which we know always acts opposite to motion. This is being pulled up the slope, which means that the frictional force is down the slope. And then we know that since this object is on a surface, that there must be a normal force that is acting on this object, and that normal force acts 90 degrees to the surface. This is the free body diagram. What is very important here is to include a key in this diagram. The key would identify what each of these forces is, so we would here say that T is the tension force, Fg is the force of gravity, friction or F is the frictional force, and N is the normal force. In the marking guidelines, the marks are often allocated here with the assumption that the free body diagram is then correct. Question 2.3 reads as follows. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of block P while block P is moving on section AB. Now what is very important when doing a two-body system like this is that you identify all of the forces acting on each object. Now we have already drawn a free body diagram for block P but it's important to do that for block Q and you can do that on the question paper where we can see that on block Q we have a force of gravity that is pulling this object vertically downward. We can see that there is a tension force that is pulling this object down the slope. There is our applied force that is acting at an angle to the incline. And then once again, there is a normal force because this object is on a surface. They have also told us that block Q moves on a frictionless section, which means that there is no frictional force acting on block Q. Once we have identified all of the forces acting on each object, we would normally separate this by saying, here is going to be my calculation for block P, here is going to be my calculation for block Q, and each of these must start with an expression for Newton's second law. Newton's second law, F net is equal to the object's mass multiplied by its acceleration. What we can then do is we can write out that expression where I am going to make the assumption that up the slope is positive and it's not a bad idea to indicate that on your diagram just by saying up the slope as our positive direction. What that then tells us is that the forces acting on block P, we know that there is a force of gravity and that force of gravity can be broken into two separate forces, those being the parallel component of that gravitational force and the perpendicular component of that gravitational force. 
And so what that tells us is the force putting it up the slope, in this case there is only one force acting up the slope, that is the tension force minus the force that is pulling it down the slope, that being Fg parallel, the parallel component of gravity acting down the slope. And as our free body diagram suggests, there is also a frictional force that is opposing the motion of the object. We can do the same for block Q, where here we can see that there is an applied force pulling it up the slope, but we need to first find the horizontal component of that applied force, horizontal or also the parallel component of that applied force, because it is not the entire 40 newtons that is pulling this object up the slope. And so the forces pulling this object up the slope are if a parallel and we subtract the forces that are pulling it down the slope, those being in this case the tension force. And what we often forget is that this also has a parallel and a perpendicular component of gravity. And we need to include that in our expression here, Fg parallel, once again acting in the opposite direction to what we have defined as positive, is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, we would start here by substituting in the values that we do already know. So our tension is an unknown. Fg parallel we know is calculated by taking the force of gravity acting on this object, that being the mass of this object multiplied by its gravitational acceleration, multiplied by it being the parallel component, that being sine of the incline, sine theta, minus the frictional force that we have been told is 2.5 newtons. And that is equal to the mass of this object, which we were told is 2 kilograms, multiplied by its acceleration. We can then substitute in once again the values that we have, mass of 2 kilograms, gravitational acceleration of 9.8, sine of the slope here, which is 30 degrees, minus the 2.5 newton frictional force, is equal to 2 times A. We can follow the same thinking here, where we find the parallel component of our applied force by seeing that if the applied force is applied at this angle here, that is 25 degrees to the slope, and this is our applied force, then we are looking for if a parallel, which is our, we would calculate using cos of the angle, cos being the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and so we would say here that is if a parallel, which is going to be our applied force of 40 newtons multiplied by cos of the 25 degree angle. That again, minus the tension force which is unknown, minus the force of gravity which is once again mass times gravity times sine of theta, which is equal to the mass of this object given as 3 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration and substitute our values once more. That is 40 cos 25 minus the tension minus the mass of 3 kilograms, gravity of 9.8, sine of the incline angle that is sine of 30 and that is equal to 3 times the object's acceleration. We can then simplify this into an expression T minus 12.3 is equal to 2 times the acceleration. And we can simplify this side into 21.55 minus T is equal to 3 times the acceleration. What we have now is we have two expressions with two unknowns where it's important to realize that since this is the same rope that connects these two objects, the tensions for each of these objects are equal, which means that we can rewrite this as T is equal to 2A plus 12.3, and this being equal to T, or T equal to 3A minus, apologies, that is negative 3A plus 21 Point five five, And now since this is the same rope and the same tension, we can now say, therefore, 2A plus 
12.3 must be equal to negative 3a plus 21.55, which allows us to then say that 5a is equal to 9.25, and therefore our acceleration is equal to 1.85 meters per second per second. And since this is a positive value, we can now calculate, or we can say that this is up the slope, although that is not necessary because the question here states, calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of block P. And then finally, question 2.4. If block P has now passed point B, how will its acceleration compare to that calculated in question 2.3? Choose from greater than, smaller than, or equal to, and give a reason for the answer. And we can now say that once it passes this point, it is on a frictionless surface, which means that the frictional force is no longer opposing the applied force that is pulling this object up the slope, which means that the net force acting on both of these objects is going to be greater, net force being greater up the slope, meaning that the acceleration up the slope is going to be greater. And then important here, they ask us to give a reason for our answer and saying anything along the lines of there is no more friction, the surface is now smooth, therefore the net force is greater. So just no friction and therefore net force greater would earn that second mark. A couple of important notes. Um, it's always advisable to start each new question on a new page. It makes it easier for the marker to find your question. Although it is not always, or it's not advised that we learn definitions parrot fashion, it is important here because the marking guidelines are very specific in that they require certain words to be in your definition. So the marking guidelines say that if the words net force are not in your definition, you would lose a mark. The second set of important words are accelerate in the direction, and acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. And so it's very important to write down the entire definition because you are not always sure where those marks would be allocated. Very important as well when drawing a free body diagram that there are a great deal of marks or many marks allocated to your key and so this key here is very very important. For your simultaneous equation it is important that at some point whether you've been asked to do that or you do it on your own that you include your that you make a free body diagram for each object. A common error is to forget the parallel components of gravity that are acting on these objects which would obviously have an impact on the rest of the question. The first thing then once you have done that is that the Newton's second law expressions F net is equal to M times A are vital for both objects. You need to explain that both objects have Newton's second law applied to it and it is not advised that you treat this as a single system. Although you can get to the right answer it would often result in you losing some of those marks that are available. For those of you who do struggle with the algebra of sorting this all out, it will be good to know that for reaching this point where you have simplified your two Newton second law expressions, just reaching this point over here, most of the marks are allocated and there are very few marks then allocated for actually getting to the correct answer. So you are encouraged to keep the two objects separate and while doing that make sure that you reach this point and then from there to do it simultaneously would get you your last mark only in this question. For example, it is an eight mark question and seven of the marks are allocated for reaching this point here. There's only one more mark for getting to this point here, your final answer. Obviously your final answer, if it does not have the correct units, it would be marked wrong. And then finally, what you are also encouraged to do is to calculate some of these components separately. If that is easier for you, you are encouraged to do that where you would rather say FG parallel is calculated as M times G sine 
of theta and do that separately and then substitute it in there, you would not be penalized for that as long as you show that calculation because there are often marks allocated to it.